Hey, all my wonderful students out there. Hey, man, Dr. Mandis here. Going to talk to you right now about equilibrium and Gibbs free energy. Equilibrium is that special case where the forward and reverse rates are equal. So you have two things going back and forth, back and forth. Got a quick little reminder about delta G. Delta G is products minus reactants. So in this case, you're going to have two things of differing energy. You take the subtraction, get delta G, right? Not a big deal. But hey, remember just a little bit about energy. Things go from a high energy state to a low energy state. So if we have energy state A, energy state B, it's going to spontaneously flow from A to B, okay? Because things go from high to low. Remember, the classic analogy is water. Water rolls downhill. Everything runs downhill. Remember, when you fill energy level diagrams with electrons, lowest energy states fill first. Lowest energy states are, fill, are preferred. Things move spontaneously from high to low. Well, what if instead of high and low, what if you have two energy states that are equal? Okay, then what happens? Things will move spontaneously back and forth and meander back and forth through that minimal energy state. And that's what's going on here at equilibrium. At equilibrium, we have energy states that are equal. So when we subtract those energy states to get delta G of reaction, we're going to get a value of zero. Okay, so here we go back to the Nernst equation so we can apply all this. Alrighty. In the Nernst equation, at equilibrium, Q is going to be K and delta G is going to be zero. So we can plug that information into Nernst equation and then rearrange with a little algebra one and we get delta G naught equals negative RT natural log K. Two little things I've got to mention here that students often have questions of later and screw up later. One is units. If you're going to solve for K, R is in joules. Delta G is in kilojoules. So if you're solving for K, then you have to do unit conversions. The thing that's going to bog you down, not right now because it's fresh in your head, but in a little bit, is T. When you come back to this later, you'll see delta G naught at standard conditions, and you'll think T has to be at standard conditions. Remember, this is equation is being derived from the Nernst equation where this little term deals with the non-standard conditions. So T is definitely potentially non-standard, not a big deal. In our example problem, let's look at an equilibrium constant, an equilibrium equation, and find delta G. Given K, asking for delta G, the equation should pop into your head and you get delta G naught equals negative RT natural log okay. K. Plug and go. Plug in your R, plug in your T, plug in your K, go to town. I switched to kilojoules here purely because it was easier to do my sig figs. <laughs> it was like 7.9. 7,096, and I wanted two sig figs, so I switched to kilojoules. You could easily answer in terms of joules. Not a big deal. One quick little application of this, phase changes. Phase changes at a point where the flow of energy isn't really happening here. It's an equilibrium gig, true. Phase changes are definitely equilibrium. You think, hey, no sirree, Bob. Well, yes, sir. If you think of a cooling curve, all right, at this little point in a cooling curve, we have equilibrium between solid liquid state, maybe. We have kinetic energy constant, definitely. We have potential energy decreasing, definitely. Well, what if the flow of energy is constant? What if we get don't have that cooling curve and we get rid of this aspect of the cooling curve and we just say, hey, all we have here is the melting, <laughs> okay? We don't know which way we're going. We don't know whether we're melting or freezing. It's hard to say. Potential energy is constant, kinetic energy is constant. We're just having it flat back and forth, back and forth. In that case, delta G is zero, all right, because the energy of the products and the reactants are equal. So if we use the Gibbs free energy equation, we can sub in zero and get zero equals heat of fusion T delta S. How does that apply to the equation? Let's do our last example real fast. At what temperature does cyclohexane melt, given a heat of fusion and entropy of fusion? A lot of students hesitate, don't know exactly where to go on this. But you say you should say, hey, all I have H S T. I have these guys. I know it's not really T, now it is. So write the equation that involves those variables. And you think to yourself, well, where am I going to get delta G from? Pay attention to the verbiage. They're talking about something melting. Understand in your head, hey, phase changes are equilibrium. So in this case, delta G is zero. So that's code giving me delta G. Now I can just plug in 
solve for t and I'm home free. The only example, the only uh, error students often make here is when they do the solving for t, sometimes they move the 268 over to the other side, make it negative, and then they forget to write that negative, and so they end up with a negative Kelvin temperature and get really wigged out and confused because negative Kelvin temperatures don't exist. So just pay attention to the nitty gritty details and as always, life will be good. I will definitely talk to you later. Have a good time.